says, But now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by thy name. <laughs> oh, I love it. I called you by thy name. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows how to call me. He knows how to get my attention. No matter what it is I'm standing through, he, needs, he knows how to speak that name. Robbie, wake up, boy. knows how to reach us in the darkest places. Yes. He knew how to reach Elijah when Elijah withdrew into that cage. He knew his name. Yes. Hallelujah. I've called thee by thy name and thou art mine. Yes. Hallelujah. Who's am I? I'm his. <laughs> he holds me in the palm of his hands. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Yes. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. <laughs> and neither shall the flame kindle upon me. This was the experience of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But it was not just their promise. It's yours too. It's mine too. Will you take it? Will you stand when you need to stand? Will you stand in the day of the Lord when the pressures of this world, when our government turns on us? Will you be able to stand? Will you be able to stand? Will you hold fast to that name of Jesus? Hallelujah. And like Stephen who died and they gnashed on him with their teeth and they stoned him, but he looked up and he saw the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, if I'm going anyway, that's how I want to go, man. <laughs> Talk about a glorious exit. Jesus. They're casting rocks, but he's got his eyes on Jesus. Yes. Life will throw so many things at us. But Jehovah Shalom is faithful to guide us through it and to keep us throughout all the adversities of this life. In times of gain, in times of loss, in times of war, in times of peace, in times of suffering, in times of health, whatever it might be. He's with you. He's with you. In closing, I want to tell you about a man by the name of Horatio Spafford. This was a man who lived sometime around the 1860s. I'm not sharing to come back to the piano. Horatio Spafford was a lawyer and a successful businessman. Had made money in real estate and owned a lot of property around Michigan, the Michigan Lakes and Lake Michigan, I believe it is, in Chicago. But in 1870, a sequence of events was going to come upon his life that I'm sure he never seen coming. And the first thing that happened to Horatio Spafford was his only son, who was four years old, came down with scarlet fever. And he lost his life, and Horatio Spafford lost his only son. Only a year later, still in the grief and agony of losing his only son, the great Chicago fire breaks out. And Horatio Spafford loses almost all of his property and his life savings. There's devastation after devastation. And so, so sometime after this, Horatio Spafford, needing to get away, decides that he and his wife and his four daughters would take a holiday and they would board a steamship to England to visit the famed evangelist D.L. Moody, who was a friend of his. But at that time, a business deal came up. And so he said that he would send his wife and daughters ahead of him and he would catch up. He had to tie up this business deal. And so his wife and his four daughters got aboard this steamship. If I can remember the pronunciation of the ship, it's Villa du Havre. And they set for England while he stayed behind to tie up the loose ends of this business deal that had just come up. 
But as the steamship sailed towards England, it was struck by an English iron vessel. And the ship carrying his wife and his four children sunk in 12 minutes time. It was the greatest naval disaster in history until the Titanic. 232 people, I believe, was the number of lives that were lost aboard that vessel. But only Horatio's four daughters being lost, and I say only, knowing it's not the right word to put there. The word that Horatio Spafford receives is a telegram that comes back from his wife. And the telegram reads, Saved alone. What shall I do? The sequence of events would have drove any man to insanity. How could you survive this after this, and now after this? But he himself got aboard a vessel to go and meet his wife in England. And as they charted across the waters, at one point a call came from the captain for him to come up top deck. He came up top deck, and the captain gave a notice and said, We now think that we passed the very waters where the Villa du Havre sunk. And so here stands Horatio Spafford, and he looks upon the waters, knowing he never had a chance to say goodbye to his four daughters. But he stands on the top deck of that ship, and he looks out over those waters, that are the graves of his children, that water, the grave of his children. And he stands on that top deck, knowing he was spared where they suffered. And he begins to pen these words. And he says, when peace, like a river, attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. The Course says it is well, it is well with my soul. The verses continue to read, though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let the blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his blood for my soul. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part, but the whole, Jesus. is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, <laughs> praise the Lord, O oh my soul. For me, be it Christ, be it Christ hence to live. If Jordan above me shall roll, no pain shall be mine. For death as is life, thou wilt whisper thy peace to my soul. <laughs> it is well. It is well with my soul. And I'm telling you, there's a peace that passes understanding. Can we just stand together? I'm going to ask Sister Sharon to lead us in that chorus right now.
Lift your voices, church. Lift your voices and sing it to the Lord.